Hi. Okay. So I haven't done a person in history for quite some time. And I thought that I would talk about the photographer behind a lot of the newsy photos and the child labor photos, Lewis Wicks Hine. He helped to change child labor laws because of his photography. So, he was born in 1874 in Wisconsin, and he studied sociology at the University of Chicago, Columbia University, and New York University. He became a teacher in New York City at the Ethical Culture School and it says here he encouraged students to use photography as an educational medium which I wish my professors had done that my professors basically told us to <laughs> they're basically telling us you know what you're photographer so be paparazzi it's like, no. <laughs> and they actually marked me down because I wouldn't do it. I'm like, wow, okay. So, and I'm wondering how many of his Ellis Island photos are from this. He took his sociology classes to Ellis Island, photographing the thousands of immigrants who arrived each day between 1904 and 1909. He took over 200 plates which are, and came to the realization that documentary photography could be employed as a tool for social change and reform. So again, I wonder how many of those Ellis Island photos are from when he was taking his students there? I love his Ellis Island photos. I really do. There are some, you know, you see a lot of them where they're sitting on the benches, you know, the parents with their kids or the kids are sleeping and, and that sort of thing. But there are some that are really cool because they show some of uh of like dancing and uh so you get a lot of the motion stuff and and that sort of thing there are some where they're looking out at the boat and uh and everything in 1907 he became a staff photographer for the russell sage foundation and photograph life in the steel making districts. For the influential sociological study called Pittsburgh Survey. Oh, my mouth doesn't want to work. <laughs> the next year, he became the photographer for the National Child Labor Committee, leaving his teaching position. Over the next decade, he documented child labor with focus on the use of child labor in let's see. Okay. Over the next decade, uh, documented child labor. To aid 
in lobbying efforts to end the practice. In 1913, he documented child laborers among cotton mill workers with a series of Francis Galton's composite portraits. I don't know who Francis Galton is. He died in 1911, 1822 to 1911, knighted, knighted in 1909. Oh, what's he? He lived in England, so he must have, okay. Okay. Hines' work was often dangerous. As a photographer, he was frequently threatened with violence or even death by factory police and foremen. Okay, so they didn't want him to see what was really going on. If you look at a lot of his photos, you see like the kids with injuries and everything, and he was trying to document that. I can see where these people would say, absolutely not, you can't take pictures of that. At the time, the immorality of child labor was meant to be hidden from the public. Of course it was. <laughs> Heaven forbid. Oh. Photography was not only prohibited, but also posed a serious threat to the industry. Hein was forced to assume many guises. At times he was a fire inspector, postcard vendor, Bible salesman, or even an industrial photographer making a record of factory machinery. Oh my gosh. I love this dude. <laughs> this part I didn't know about him. Because we researched him for class but this this is part of it I didn't know <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> oh that is amazing and you want to know something the fact that he was so dedicated and did that is the reason that there is no child labor now so <laughs> well done well done during and after World War I, he photographed American Red Cross relief work in Europe. In the 1920s and early 1930s, he made a series of work portraits which emphasized human contribution to the modern industry. Oh, that must be his Empire State Building stuff, which is really neat. I really like his Empire State Building. Of course, I like industrial stuff anyway. Uh, yeah, um, the famous thing where the guys are having lunch on that steel beam, that's a Lewis Hine thing. That's his older work. He photographed the workers in precarious positions as they secured the steel framework of the structure. Taking many of the same risks that the workers endured in order to obtain the best vantage points. Hein was swung out in a specially designed basket a thousand feet above Fifth Avenue. Oh wow! And you have to remember what the cameras were back then. So... Wow. You know, and I am so amazed because his, <laughs> you know, there were times that I had to click, 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 and I was still not, you know, my camera would be on the tripod and I was clicking, 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 and I still wasn't getting a sharp photo. He gets one shot. <laughs> I'm like, damn it, what did they do? Okay, Great Depression. He worked with 
he worked for the Red Cross, photographing drought relief, American South, life in the mountains of eastern Tennessee. He also served as chief photographer for the work Progress Administrations, let's see, which studied changes in industry and their effects on Okay. Okay, in 36, he was selected as the photographer for the natural, National Research Project of the Works Projects Administration, but his work was not completed. I wonder why. The last years of his life were filled with professional struggles by loss of government and corporate patronage. Few people were interested in his work, past or present, and Hein lost his house and applied for welfare. You know, it's kind of sad. that he did so much, he documented so much. I mean, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have the building of the Empire State Building, you know, the, the workers working on the Empire State Building. We wouldn't have the child labor, which helped to bring down the child labor laws. And, um, cause think about it. Would we still have child labor if it weren't for him? something to think about. I'm sure it probably would have been abolished at some point. Um, but the fact that it was abolished thanks to his photos says something because who knows how long it would have continued to go. Um, would, it, would it have been stopped in the 50s? 60s, 80s? I mean, you don't know. Oh, this is sad. After his death, his son donated his prints and negatives to the Photo League, which was dismantled in 1951. Museum of Modern Art was offered his pictures and did not accept them, but the George Eastman House did. Um, I'm surprised, considering, like I said, you know, it's kind of like that, um, the gentleman that photographed the Titanic, the in oh, who, who was that? Father Brown. And there were certain parts of the Titanic that he photographed the interior, like the macro room. He's the only one that photographed that. If he hadn't have taken that snapshot, we would never have that. Some people say that the reason they let him photograph everything was because he was a father. It's like, I don't think so. <laughs> they could have just told him, please just don't do that. <laughs> Library of Congress holds 5,000 of Heinz photographs, including examples of its child labor and Red Cross. <laughs> so in 2006, author Elizabeth Winthrop 
I'll stop. I'll put the name in the description. She has a historical fiction book titled Counting on Grace. Again, I'll put it in the description. And in her book, the character meets with photographer Lewis Hine. That's really neat. So th apparently that's the only... Well, maybe not. Or maybe so. <laughs> 2016, time published, colorized versions of several of Lewis Hines photographs child labor in the US. Okay, Breaker Boys, 1910. Note of oh, boys. That baseball photo is his. I found this photo. Um and they're from a glass making factory in Indiana. My grandma and grandpa are from Indiana. I wonder if it doesn't say exactly where. My my grandmother was telling me a story about a glass making factory from Indiana and she knew some of the people there, so But there's these boys, and they they look rough and tough, and um, they they're holding baseball bats and everything, and one of the boys is smoking a pipe, and and I was saying that it was the Edwardian version of uh, oh, what's that movie? Now I'm blanking. That baseball movie, you know, the "You're Killing Me" Smalls. <laughs> can't believe I just forgot it. But anyway, there is, I will also put in the description a website that I found that has a lot of his photos. Um, it also has captions on the photos of these people and everything and um he took quite a few pictures i thought of locomotives could be wrong <laughs> been wrong before but um yeah i it could have been another photographer I was thinking of at the time who traveled around. Yeah, I think it's it was Father Brown. I'll have to do a video on him. Um, I got my signals crossed. But, um, but Lewis Hine, it was the industrial thing. <laughs> Lewis Hine was specifically the child labor, and then he, he did the documenting of life um especially in, he did lewis island i mean ellis island sorry <laughs> i'm everywhere now ellis island and again his his ellis island aren't just like the kids next to their mom or you know that sort of thing there are some that are just fun you see some people on the boat and they're looking out at the ocean and, and that sort of thing, or you see people dancing and they're very enjoyable. So, um, look those up if you get a chance. There's, um, his 1920s, I haven't seen any from 1930, I don't, I haven't seen very many of his Red Cross pictures. But that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I restored the young candy maker. She's holding the stack of candy in her hand. Um, but anyway, 
I just thought that, you know, because we've, we see all of those newsy pictures and we've seen a few of the other kids that are, you know, like the mill workers, we've seen that famous picture of the little girl standing in front of the, the window and, and everything. And, um, so, and, and then of course the, the Empire State photos that one that I was talking about where they're sitting on the beam eating their lunch and um can't do that today <laughs> and uh but I just thought that we should talk about the person behind these photos it's Lewis Wicks Hein um, and he didn't just photograph the kids that you saw on the street. He would also, I mean, the fact that he would disguise as a fire inspector and postcard vendor and Bible salesman or, and, and all this other stuff just to get in because of the fact that, <laughs> just so he could document this stuff so we have this stuff because he did that um yeah that i did not know till just now so anyway um yeah that's lewis wicks hein <laughs>